All right, Dr. Cruz here. Let's look at the binomial probability distribution table. Now, all of these numbers in the table were calculated using this formula up here, which I'll show you later. First thing I want to start with is P, probability of success. This is the probability of a single success. For example, if I'm flipping a coin, if I'm flipping a coin and I'm trying to get heads, the probability that I flip one coin and get heads is 50%. So to look up the probability of a 50% coin flip, I would stay in this column right here. All right, now as far as these numbers over here, this is how many times you're going to flip the coin, and this is how many times you expect to win. So let's go down to uh, four flips. All right, I'm in the 50% column because the probability of flipping a coin a single time and winning is 50%. I'm going to go down to my group of four because I'm going to flip it four times. And these are all the probabilities, all the possible outcomes that could happen. This is my sample space. These guys add up to 100%. They add up to 1 because I've taken into account every possible thing that could happen. I could win 0 out of 4 flips. I could win 1 out of 4 flips, 2 out of 4 flips, 3 out of 4 flips. Or I could win all 4 out of 4 flips. So just to go through these a little bit, it looks like I have a 0 0.062. Let's call that a 6% chance of winning none of the four flips. And uh, 0.375, that's about 38%. I have about a 38% probability of winning two of the four flips. What about winning all four flips? That's back to 0 0.062. So I have about a 6% chance of winning four out of four flips. All right, so the numbers in this column, that's the number of games you're going to play or the number of times you're going to flip the coin. And the R column is how many times you hope to win. I hope to win zero out of four, two out of four, four out of four. The number at the top tells us which column to look at, and that's the probability of winning if you just play a single game, if you just flip one coin or just play one hand of blackjack or whatever. Let me explain. We just talked about P up here, the probability of winning if you play a single time. Now Q is the, the complement of that, the probability of you know losing, if you want to think of it that way. Let's say I'm playing a game or a, a game of blackjack or whatever. Let's say my chances of winning, if I play a single hand of blackjack, are 40%. All right, just whatever casino I'm at, I'm sitting down to the blackjack table and I just play one hand. Well, if I just play one hand... <laughs> I have a 40% chance of winning a single hand. That's P, the probability of winning a single hand, versus Q, which would be the probability of not winning. That would be the rest of the 100%. So if there's a 40% chance of winning, that means there's a 60% chance of not winning. So this would be 0.40, this would be uh, 0.60. All right, so we know what the P stands for, we know what the N stands for, we know what the R stands for. The only thing I haven't discussed up here is the capital C and this is a key on your calculator it calculates the number of combinations uh, if I want to win two out of three uh, hands of blackjack I would put three combination two into my calculator and it would tell me how many different combinations of two I could put out there if I had three to play with all right I like to think of it as a, a basketball team with three people on the bench and I can put two people in at a time how many different teams of two could I put in if I had three sitting on the bench to choose from? All right, so let's go back to that hand of blackjack. I'm playing at a casino, and my chance of winning a single hand could be, you know, anything in this area. It just depends on the casino, depends on the rules. Let's say I'm playing at a casino where my chance of winning a single blackjack hand is 40%. So I'm in this column, and let's say I want to play um, five hands of blackjack. So the chance of winning a single hand is 40%, and I want to come down here to a group of five, all right? So 40% down here to a group of five. I'm talking about these probabilities right here, starting with 0 0.078. So my chance of winning zero, none, of the five hands is 0 0.078. My probability of winning one of the five hands, one out of five, is 0.259 and so on. My probability of winning all five hands of blackjack out of five hands played is 0.010, so about a 1% chance 
of winning five out of five hands. Now, as far as the notation, this is what it would look like. The probability of winning zero out of five, one out of five, two out of five, three out of five, four out of five, or all five hands. And these are the probabilities I looked at. All right. So when I say the probability of winning zero out of five, remember five, that's how many hands I'm going to play. That's N. And the top number there, how many hands I hope to win, that's the R. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are the R. So the probability of that R is 0. The probability I win 0 out of 5 hands is 0 0.078. The probability that R equals 1 means that's the probability that I'll win 1 out of 5 times, 2.259 from the table, and so on. The probability that I'll win 2 hands, the probability that the R is 2, R is 2, 2 out of 5 hands, it's 0.346 and so on. Notice that they add up to 1. If we're talking percents, they add up to 100%. Sometimes in the table they're off just a hair because each one of these numbers has been rounded a tiny bit. So when you round a bunch of numbers and then add them up, sometimes it's off just a hair. All right, using that table up above, let me work a couple of probabilities with you. Probability of three or four successes. Now, or is your addition rule. So that's the probability of three plus the probability of four minus the probability that both three and four happen at the same time. Now, we're talking about wins. Remember, winning three out of five times, winning four out of five times. I can't do both. I'm either going to win three out of five times or I'm going to win four out of five times. So there's no chance of this happening. That one's going to be a zero. Probability of three from the table. Probability of four from the table, add them up. And the probability of three or four successes is about, let's call that 31%. The probability of at least one, all right? The probability I lend, the probability that I play blackjack five times and I win at least once. Well, at least once means I could win one time, two times, three times, four times, or all five times. So the probability that R, R is the number of times I hope to win. The probability that R is equal to 1, see it can be 1, that's okay, or bigger than 1, 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 all right? probability that R is greater than or equal to 1, which means at least 1, is all of those probabilities added up in the table. A quicker way to do it is to realize that you were talking about all of the probabilities except the probability of 0. See, we just added up all these probabilities right here. 0.259 all the way down. The only one I didn't include was the probability that I win no hands of blackjack. So a quicker way to do it is just start with 100% and subtract out this 7.8%. Speaking decimal, we just start with 1 and we subtract 0 0.078. It's kind of a quicker way of getting to the same place, but it doesn't matter which way you do it. Um, if we say the probability of no more than 2, all right. No more than two. That means you can have two, you can have one, you can have zero, but you can't have any more than two. Add up those three. I got a 0.683 chance, a 68% chance that I'll play five hands of blackjack and I'll win no more than two. There's a 68% chance that'll happen. So I'm saying that R, these numbers here, the zero, one, and two, I'm saying that R can be two. It can be equal to two right there. And it can be any number less than two. That's one and that's zero. So the probability that R is less than or equal to two is 0.683. Let me look at a word problem here with you. Um, this is 20% of adults buy clothing, wear it once and return it, like they wear it to a party, you know, one time, and then take it back and get their money back. So let's say you're in a group of seven friends and then find the following probabilities. Well, first of all, we have to figure out what part of the table we're looking at. So I'm surveying a group of seven friends all right, and the probability that any one of those has done it, if I just pick one friend at random, the odds that they have done this thing are 20%. That's my probability of a single success. If I play the game one time, or I flip the coin one time, or I roll the dice one time, or I draw one raffle ticket, or I pick one friend, what's the odds of success? In this case, it's 20%. There's a 20% chance I'll grab a random friend and they have done this. So P, our probability of a single success, is 20%, 0 0.20. And I'm asking a group of seven friends. It's going to be a group of seven. That's going to be N equals seven. Let's go find that in the table. 
Okay. Probability of a single success, probability of picking a single friend, one friend, and that they have done this thing is 20%. So I'm in the 0 0.20 column. That's the one, two, three, four, fifth column over. So I'm in the fifth column here, and I want to go down to a group of seven. All right, so fifth column over, one, two, three, four, five. I'm in this column right here, starting with the 0 0.210. So the probability that none of my friends have done it, zero out of seven, is 0 0.210. The probability that one out of my seven friends has done it is 0.367. The probability that two out of my seven friends have done it is 0.275, and so on. Notice how it kind of works its way to zero here. So for this particular probability, the probability that six out of my seven friends have done this thing is zero. There's no chance that six out of seven of my friends have done it. Same thing with seven out of seven. There's no chance that seven out of seven or that all of my friends have done it. There's no chance. All right. So here's my probabilities all written down. The ones we just looked at, they add up to one nicely. What's the probability that no one has done it? That means the probability that r equals zero, that zero out of seven people have done it, 0 0.210 from the table. What's the probability at least one person has done it? Well, at least one means it could be one, could be two, could be three, four, five, six, or all seven. I'm going to add all of those numbers up for that probability, the probability of at least one. The probability that r is greater than or equal to one. It can be, it can be all these numbers greater than one, and it can also be equal to 1. So the probability that r is greater than or equal to 1, I'm going to add all those up. Remember the shortcut. The shortcut for at least 1 is start with your 1, your 100%, and subtract out the only probability you weren't talking about, this 0.210. Okay? So the probability that none of your friends do it, the probability that r equals 0 is 0.210. The probability that at least 1 does it is all of your probabilities added up together, except the probability of zero, gives you 0.79. So there's a 79% chance that at least one of your friends has done it. Or you can do it the short way, start with 100% and subtract the 21% for the probability that none has done it. You end up at the same place. Okay. What a probability of at least two. All right, oops, I'm sorry, I said the wrong thing. No more than two, I can't read. Uh, the probability that no more than two have done it, all right? So no more than two, so not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, no more than two. So it can be two, it can be one, it can be zero. I'm gonna add these three up, and here's how we notate it. All right, probability that no more than two have done it. So R is equal to two or anything less than two. So it can be two, it can be one, it can be zero. These are less than two, this is equal to two but no more than two, not three, not four, not five. All right, add those up. All right, the last thing I wanna show you is that sometimes they change the probability of a single success, the probability of winning a single time. So winning a single hand of blackjack or a single coin flip or a single raffle ticket, or you choose a, a one random single friend. <laughs> Oops, excuse me. <clears throat> the probability of winning sometimes changes. It just depends on how they phrase the question. So this question says 25% of businessmen wear their, wear their ties too tight, making themselves dumber, you know, because they're cutting off their blood supply, supply. At a meeting of 20 businessmen, what are the following probabilities? Okay, let's figure out where we are in the table. So we're saying if you pick a random businessman, if you pick one businessman, what's the chance they're wearing their tie too tight? 25%. That's going to be my P. P is 0.25. If I'm measuring people that wear their tie too tight, if I randomly pick a person, what's the odds that they're wearing their tie too tight? 25%. If I just randomly pick one person, that's called the probability of a single success. So anything that asks about the probability of being too tight, that probability is going to be the 25% column. You're going to go to the 0.25 column and look up your probabilities. But if they switch it, if they say something like at least 18 are not too tight, well, this is a different game, all right? This is like I'm playing blackjack in the casino, and then I switch and I move to a different game, and now I'm playing roulette or whatever. This is a different game with a different probability of success. 
So think about this. If I just grab one of those 20 businessmen, just randomly, I pull a name out of a hat, what's the odds that their tie is not too tight? Well, that's 75%. 25% are too tight. That means 75% are not too tight. And this question asks about not too tight. So they've changed my P. They've changed my probability of a single success to 0.75. So now I'm in a different column for this question. So to answer this probability, I have to switch the probability of a single success to 75%. So back to my table. All right. Probability of their tie is too tight is 25%. So I'm in this column here. I want to go down to a group of 20. All right, so 25%, group of 20. So starting with 0 0.003, these are all of my probabilities out of those 20 people. All right, two out of 20, tie too tight. Six out of 20, their tie is too tight. 10 out of 20, their tie is too tight. And I'm working out of this 25% success column. Now, if they switch and say, oh, this question is about the people whose ties are not too tight, well, that's the complement of 25%. That would be 75%. And now I have to switch over to this column and use these probabilities to answer that question. All right, they're switching the game. Uh, uh, the chance of winning a single time at this game is 75%. I'm in a different column with different probabilities. All right, the last thing I'm going to show you is... Uh, you know how to use this formula. All of these numbers came from this formula. So first, let me show you how one of these numbers came about. And then after we do that, then I'll show you how to calculate it for a number that's not in the table. Because sometimes they'll throw a P, a probability of single success, at you that is not a nice 40 or 45 or 50 or 55 percent. It might be something in between like 53% or 27% or 36%. So if they give you a probability of a single success that is not in your table, well, then you got to go and use this formula here. So let me show you how to use that formula. All right, just to practice this formula, how about we try to win uh, three out of four times, and let's say the probability of winning a single time is 30%. So in my 30% column, the probability of winning three out of four times, three out of four times, is 0 0.076. Let's get that uh, using the formula. So here's what we're doing. We're in the 30% column. Right? Because the probability of just playing one time and winning is 30%, which means the probability of not winning is 70%. And we're going to play four times. Let's say we're playing blackjack. So the probability at this table uh, at this casino, the probability of winning in a single hand of blackjack, if I just walk in and play one hand, the probability of me winning is 30%, which means the probability of me losing is 70%. Well, I'm going to play four hands of blackjack, and maybe I want to find out what's the odds or what's the probability that I win three out of four hands of blackjack. And we saw on the table it was 0 0.076. Let's go ahead and calculate that on the calculator. Let's start on the good old 83 here. Um, uh, 83, it's a little bit harder to put in this combination. That capital C stands for combination. It's saying if you have a team of four sitting on the bench and you can only put in three at a time, how many different three-person teams could you put in if you had four to choose from? So the calculator will tell us this. Now on the 83, let me get the light right here. On the 83, before I go get that combination key, I'm going to have to put in how many is in my group. So I have four in my group. I'm going to play blackjack four times. So let's enter a four. And now I'm going to go find the uh, combination key. And the combination key is right here in the math menu. So math, go right, 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 until you're in the PRB menu. And then down to option three. There's your combination program. And it says, okay, I want to win three out of four times. So I've already put the out of four times. See the N four times? How many times do I want to win? I want to, I want to win three times. Now, just out of curiosity, how many combinations is that? That's four different teams of three I could put in. If I had four people sitting on the bench and I can put three people in on the court at one time, I can make four different teams. All right, so I just did that for grins. There's four combinations, but anyway, let's normally I wouldn't stop there. I would just keep going. 
So I got uh, uh, combinations. How many combinations? If I can pick through, if I can choose three from four, I'm going to go ahead and times. And now I need the probability of a single success, 30%. And I want to raise it to the R. That's how many times I want to win. See the R there? That's three. And then times probability I'll lose, 70%. And I want to raise it, and usually I just do the math in my head, to the n minus r. There's n, there's r, so n minus r is 1. And hit enter, and there it is, rounded, that's 0 0.076, right there. Alright, so now that we know how to do that, let's try one that's a little messier. So I've worked a couple out here for you, and you guys can just uh, play with these you know, on your own later. But given that the probability of winning a single time is 0.4174, so that's like 41.74%, that one is not in the table. It goes in the table, it goes from 40% to 45%, from 0 0.40 to 0.45. So this is not in the table, which means we're going to have to use the formula. Now to find Q, you just subtract this from 1, all right? So if there's a 42% chance of winning, that means there's a 58% chance of losing. Just subtract the chance of winning from 1, and you got the chance of losing. Now what if they ask you, uh, if, if they say you're going to play four hands of blackjack, kind of like we just did, what's the probability of winning three out of four hands of jack, jack black, blackjack? Uh, okay, we're going to play four times. I hope to win three out of four. That's my combination times the probability of success, 0.4174, raised to the R, that's how many times I want to win, all right, times the probability of losing, that's the rest of it, 1 minus this is 0.5826, raised to the N minus R, that's just 1, I would just put that in my calculator as this raised up to the first power, so there's about a 17% chance of me winning 3 out of 4 times if the odds of winning a single time is about 0.4174. What's the odds of me winning all four times? Four out of four times. Well, now it's going to look like this. I want to win four out of four times times the probability of success raised to R, how many times I want to win, this four right here, times the probability of losing raised to the N minus R. Well, N minus R is zero. So you can just raise that to the zero if you want to. And you should get about a 3% chance, 0 0.03, that's 3%. There's about a 3% probability that you'll win four out of four hands of blackjack if the odds of winning a single hand of blackjack is about 42%.